The Enlightenment of the World By John G. Abizaid Letter 48, Shawmut Avenue, Boston, Massachusetts June 6, 1912 John G. Abizaid 121, Tyler Street Dear Sir I have read your book on the Flat Earth, and am quite pleased with it. It would be a good book for school children and for men and women of all ages who are ready and willing to think for themselves. I do not see for a moment how any man or woman can be intelligent and at the same time honest and believe that the earth is round and not flat, or as we see it. Any and all expanse of water cannot be other than flat upon its surface, and all land has but one surface, and difference only according to its various heights from the sea level. That the sun is very high, small in comparison to the earth is certainly true. The earth is too large and dense to move in the least, while the sun is always moving. For to teach otherwise is most absurd. I shall be pleased to aid you in any way I can to unfound the falsity of a round and moving earth. Yours sincerely, William Peel. How do you find this book? Any thoughts about the book or the author? Any suggestion for improvement? Please take a moment to share your thoughts in a comment. If you like it, share it with your friends who might enjoy it as well. Subscribe to keep in touch. Visit CompleteAudiobooks.com for more quality content. Preface to the Second Edition This book has common words and phrases, so that everyone may understand its meaning. I wrote it first in Arabic, then translated it into English, because nearly all Americans can read and write their own language. My reason for printing this book is not to make money or fame, but because I wish to show people who differ from my views where their mistakes lie. Everything in this book is true. What I think on the subject is not guesswork. You will find in it a good foundation for belief, good ideas, and absolute proofs. You do not need to accept it merely on faith, but you may see with your own eyes and feel with your own bodies. Thus you may know it is the truth. And as long as you have eyes to see and a body to feel and brains to think with, use them and you will know the facts. Christians believe the Bible. In this book of holy writ are proofs given by the prophets that the world is flat and stationary, and that the sun, moon and stars are always in motion. There are many, however, who do not accept the truths of the Bible, and for this reason I give other proofs. There are some things that need witnesses, but other truths are their own witnesses, they bear the proof in themselves. 1. The Water You know that there is more water on the earth than dry land. Here is the first proof. The water proves that the earth is flat, level and stationary. Water is liquid. It runs always down and seeks its level, and never runs up unless by power. And the water of the ocean is every way pretty near joined together on the earth, and they call it liquid. It will not stay on a round earth. Take a glass of water and pour it on a round ball and if the water stays on, then the earth must be round, but if the water falls off then the earth must be flat. This is the proof, take a pan and fill it with water and see if it is higher in the center than on the sides. If this is true, then the water of the ocean might be round, but if the water in the pan is flat and level, then the water of the ocean must also be flat and level. The water of the ocean is level and can be nothing else, because it is liquid, which proves that the land is flat and not round. The land is not exactly flat and level, for there are mountains and valleys. But it makes no difference, for if the mountains were in the valleys it would leave the land flat and level and higher than the water. I have been thinking of the question for a long time. At last I have found out for myself from the water and the sunbeams, the sun's rising, the sunlight, etc., that the earth cannot be round and in motion, as books and teachers have taught. The teachers offer proofs to show that the earth is round, but the proofs they offer amount to nothing. When the children go to school, the teacher tells them the world is round, and, of course, they believe it, and they do not ask how it is round. They are young and they know very little. When they grow up they still believe the earth is round and in motion, and so in turn they teach this to others. The water is flat, which proves that the earth is flat and stationary. 
From its fruit you will know what kind of a tree it is. You can tell by looking at a building whether it has a good foundation or not. A judge will not take witnesses who are far away, but those that are near him, so that he can speak to them and examine the case and find out the truth. The proofs about the earth are found the same way. The nearer the proofs are to the mind the better we can understand them. The proofs in this book are very good and can be understood by anyone. Don't pay attention to a far away proof. It may not be the truth. The sun cannot throw the earth's shadow on the moon, because sometimes they are very near to each other. This you can tell in the evening and in the morning by seeing the moon and the sun at the same time. You ought not to believe everything the professors say, because they do not know everything. The man who said that the earth was proved round by the sight of a row of ships upon the ocean made a mistake, and what he says is not true. Just because he measured and looked at the subject in his own way, he has not proved it but guessed at it. From his guess he thought the land and water are round, but the water will not stay round, as he thinks. They claim in the geographies that when the last ship is out of sight, it is a proof that the water is round, but it is a proof that the water is flat. You will see if you look and measure in a good many different ways, as is done in this book. If he was wise enough he would measure the steamers from different points and see that it always comes to the same thing, like the 15 puzzle which will count 15 when added in any direction. Try and insert the figures 1 to 9, inclusive, so they will total I5, adding across, up and down, and diagonally. The key to the puzzle is to have the right figure in the center. If you take the 5 out of the center you cannot add them 15 every way, try and see. In this way, measuring the steamers from different places proves that the earth is flat, and if you measure from many places you can prove nothing else. It is the same way with the steamers. If you don't leave one in the center you will think the water of the ocean is round. But if you try this proof of the steamers you will know the water of the ocean is level and flat. A person standing on the shore sees a steamer full size when it is near him, but when it goes out farther it keeps growing smaller until it is out of sight. They think this is good proof that the water of the ocean is round, but it is not a good proof, because water is liquid and will not stay round. The distant view shows you that. It is the same as with a book. You cannot read it five yards away from your face, but near your face you can read it plainly. A person standing on the seashore will see a large steamer, but as it goes out farther it grows smaller, and the mast of the steamer will be shorter, too. But if a person stood on the opposite shore he would see the steamer large when near him and as it goes out farther it grows smaller, which gives proof that the water is flat and level, and not round, the far distance will show you that. There is no chance for anybody to say that the earth is round, for as long as the water is flat and level and straight, it proves that the land can be nothing but level and stationary, and the sun in motion. I have read books on geography, and I find they claim that the earth is round and in motion. I have been thinking over this matter, and have read considerable in regard to the subject. I do not blame the children or teachers, but the first man who said the earth is round. He told the people the earth was round, but did not know for sure. He only guessed at it we do not have to believe such guesswork as long as we have eyes to see and bodies to feel and brains to think. They say the earth is round, both land and water, and that they are always moving around the sun. But if you ask them how the water keeps in its bed while the earth is turning, they will tell you to take a pail of water and swing it fast and see, for the water will not come out until the pail is slowed down. Who has seen the earth turn around in the way that a person turns a pail? No one. And as long as no one has ever seen the earth turn, you need not believe that it does so. Who is turning the earth? Is it turning on its axis and what kind of an axis is it? No one knows. Is it iron, steel, wood or tin? You do not want to believe such statements that the earth is standing on an axis, for no one has seen it. It is all guesswork and nothing seen by human beings. Some people say the world is round and that God is turning the world, but very few believe it. If they do they should pay attention to his prophecies, and ought to believe them as they say about the movement of the sun and standing of the earth, and so forth.
If you wish to know what the earth stands on, I can say, that, and I believe what I say, the earth rests on water just like a ship floats on the water. This is a good proof without doubt. I know the earth is large, and being so tremendous large, must necessarily be of tremendous weight. And a heavy body, it has no power to move in the sky around the sun anywhere. Also it cannot lay or turn on nothing as they think. Try something and let us see if you can make anything stand or turn daily on nothing itself. I am sure you cannot do that. Also they have no right proof to it as they believe. The swing of the pail is not a correct proof either, because the man swings the pail. But the pail cannot swing itself because it has no power. Also the earth cannot move on nothing because it has no power to move. Try and put some water on the outside of a pail, and I am sure you will see the water on the ground before you begin to swing the pail. The water of the ocean is the same thing, for if the earth is round, as they say, there would be no water on the earth, as all of it would fall off. If the earth is round and revolving we should feel it. Also the wind would be coming from one direction only, and not from north, south, east and west. I have read a story in the geography about the earth being round, as they claim. It says when the ship is near the shore a person on shore will see the mast, high and big, but as the ship goes further out, he will see it low and smaller as if it were going downhill. If a man were standing on the steamer deck, however, he would see the land low, while he would be high. If there were any high mountains near the shore, and you were on a steamer some distance from the coast, when you looked toward the land, the mountains would seem to you to be low and small, but they are not. It is the distance that makes them seem so. The water is flat and level always and cannot be anything else because it is liquid. You know, of course, what liquid is, and what the word means. Here is another proof to show that the water of the ocean is flat and level. Suppose five steamers are in a circle, each just within eyesight of the others, with another steamer in the middle. If you are in the middle steamer looking out at the others, they will look as if they were very low and in a hollow, while you seem to be the highest. But if you were to leave your own steamer and go and turn to all of the others in the circle it would then look to you as if the steamer you were in first were very low. Whichever steamer you are on seems to you at the time to be the highest. It is not true that one steamer is higher than the other, or that the water of the ocean is round. It is flat, and nearly always straight. It is the distance that makes the other seem lower. Here is still another proof, if these steamers are in a straight line, on the ocean, as far apart as I can reach, and you are in the middle one looking at the others on either side, then they will look as if they were in a hollow. While well, you seem to be the highest. But it is true that to the people on the other steamers it looks as if your ship were low in the water and their own the highest. Do you think there are hills and valleys in the ocean? No. No. This cannot be true, because the water is liquid, and therefore must be level. These are proofs to show that the water is not round as the geography says, but that it is really fiat and level. I think I have given enough proofs to change your minds about the earth being flat, not round. The water proves that the land is stationary, flat and level. 2. The land. The land is solid and all in one piece, joined together under the ocean all over the earth. The earth cannot be round and in motion as they claim in the geographies, but flat and stationary, because the water is liquid and level and it proves that the land is flat and not moving. Another proof which shows that the earth is standing still and not moving is to be found in the wind, which they call the atmosphere. If the earth is turning around daily it will give wind from one direction only. If you see a train running you will find out that it is giving wind in one direction. But when it stops the wind stops with it. Nobody ever felt the wind blowing at the same rate daily, but they will feel the wind blowing at times very hard and at other times very gently, and often from different directions, and sometimes there is a very little wind. This is good proof to show that the earth is stationary. If the earth was in motion in one direction, it would make the wind pressure in the same direction always. You will find my proofs right if you will only pause and think them over. This is another proof to show you that the earth is not moving. 
If, when you go up in a balloon or airship, starting from a certain place and going as high as you can and when you come down find that place gone from under you. Then you may believe that the earth has moved. But if you find yourself in the same place, or not so very far away from your starting point, then it is plain that the earth is stationary and not moving at all, and this is what really happens. If, moreover, the earth is turning around and the birds or airships are flying the same way, they will find themselves over the same place they were before. If they fly in the opposite direction of the turning of the earth, they will find themselves flying very fast and always over different places. If you think this over you will find these proofs correct. After all, the earth cannot be round, because most of it is water, and water cannot be anything but level, as I have given proofs in chapter 1. Take a pan of water and turn it upside down, and I am sure the water will fall out. Also, if the earth turns around, the water of the ocean would destroy a great many cities, towns and countries. But the earth cannot be turning or in motion. If it is turning, we should know it immediately, because we have eyes to see, bodies to feel with, and brains to think with. Suppose you were riding on a train, car or boat, you would know that you were on something that is shaking. When the train or car goes uphill or downhill, you can easily tell, even with your eyes closed whether it is going up or down. It is the same way with the earth. If the earth is turning around or is in motion, we would know it from many different things, as I said before. They say that there is gravity in the earth which holds everything on it when it turns around. They give these proofs to the people and children in school, and most of them believe such foolish things as that. Their proofs do not amount to anything, but it is all guesswork, because nobody ever felt it or saw it. I was surprised to know that some people believe in things that were never seen or felt. But the things they can see and feel they pay no attention to. They say if you drop anything it will fall down to the ground, they only think the law of gravitation takes it down. Oh, I am sorry for them. They ought to know better than that. They ought to know that heavy things, and all things that have no power like dead bodies, will go down themselves. But some things have power, like the bird, or light things like smoke, and so forth, they will go up, or any way they like. If there was a law of gravity it would bring them down also. Most of the people know up from down, and ought not to believe this foolish thing. I feel sorry that the children are taught about gravity, and that the earth is round and traveling around the sun, and also that the sun is larger than the earth. There is no gravity at all, for if there was, a person could not move a step, and if a bird was on the ground it could not fly in the air again, because the gravity would hold it back. If there is gravity, it is not everywhere, and cannot hold everything, such as gas, balloons, airships, etc. Here is another proof to show that the earth is flat and stationary. If the earth is round and in motion, as they claim, we should know, for when it turns around, at times we should find our heads and feet and the world above us. As though a person were standing on a ceiling with his head downwards and his feet up. If we were held fast to the earth by gravity, or tied by ropes, we should feel it, and know which way the earth is turning with us. But there is no such thing as gravity, because no one ever felt it. You must not think that you are an intelligent being because you know a great many things. I am sure that no person knows everything in the world. You ought not to believe everything that people say, that the earth is round and in motion, and that the sun is stationary and larger than the earth, etc., until you have examined the facts and found out the truth and follow it. I think I have given you enough proofs to change your minds about the earth's being round and in motion. You will find in chapter 3 proofs about the sun going around in a circle above the earth. 3. The sun, moon and stars. In this chapter you will find proofs to show that the sun, moon and stars are always in motion. I have proved in chapter 1 and 2 that the earth is flat and stationary. As long as the earth is flat and stationary, it will prove that the sun is in motion over the earth, and traveling in a circle, lighting up all the countries that it shines upon. It cannot light up all the world at once, because the earth is larger than the sun. People think the sun is large because they see it through a spyglass. The spyglass, you know, 
makes everything seen through it look large, even when it is not large, and you can see the sun round and move, circling above the earth, you will know that without any proof. Do not believe that the sun is stationary and larger than the earth. For it cannot be larger than the earth. See illustration of sun rising and sunbeams. If the sun is larger than the earth, it would light up all the world at once. Think this over and you will find that what I say is correct and the proofs are correct also. If you are in a room with windows towards the rising sun, you will find that the sun always throws its rays down near the floor and not on the ceiling. I am sure that the rays of the sun will never touch the ceiling either morning or evening. It makes no difference if you have your room on a high mountain, the sun will be higher. Its own light proves that for itself. This will prove that the sun is high, but if you see the sunlight on the ceiling, that will mean that the sun is rising from a low place, or that the earth is round and in motion. But if you cannot see the sunlight on the level ceiling, that will prove that the sun is always high, and the earth flat and stationary. The sun is always high and turning in a circle above the earth. In winter the sun goes far from us, which makes the days short and cold, but in summer when it comes back near us, it makes the days long and warm. You will know when the sun is near you and when it is far from you, from its light. Also you can tell which way it is turning in a circle above the earth from its rising and from its light, and also you know that by observation. And if you examine the sunlight you will find the sun is traveling in a circle. Some people say that if they start from a certain place and go around the earth, that they would pass under the earth and come back at the same place they started from. They think that the earth is round like an orange. Also that they have passed under the earth. The earth cannot be round, for I have given a great many proofs to show that it is flat and level. They follow the compass, and the compass always points to the middle of the earth which we call north. They travel in a circle on a level place near the equator and they think they are going around the earth in a circle, but they are really traveling on flat and level ways. It cannot be any other way. If they started on a steamer and went south without a compass, they would get lost and find nothing but water, ice and darkness. Here is another good sign that shows that the sun is very high and smaller than the earth. When the sun is rising in the United States of America, it will look as though it is rising from a low place. But the people in Europe will see the sun very high over their heads about noontime, also the people in Asia Minor will see the sun very low in the afternoon. Do not think that there is a hollow between Asia Minor and the United States because the sun looks low to the people in Asia and to us, U.S., but high to the people in Europe? No. No. There is no hollow, but it is all level, for the great distance from here to the sun shows you that. Illustrations Explanation of the chart The meaning of A, B, C, D and E on the lines of the sunbeams in the illustration of the position of the sun. The first line of the sunbeam, A, means when you first see the sun in the morning. It seems to you the sun is rising from a low place. If you examine any shadow or your own shadow, you will see the shadows long when the sun is coming from a great distance, but when the sun comes near you, your shadow will be short. Examine the sunbeams and your own shadow, you will soon know that the sun is round, high and in motion, smaller than the earth and moving in a circle above it. B means in the A, M. When the sun has come nearer to you, and is shining more directly over you and you feel it warmer. Your shadow is shorter and is passing by you. You will see that this is correct if you will take time and watch it. C means midday. At that time the sun is nearest to you. You will see it above your head, and you will feel warmer and your shadow will be shorter than at any other time. D means in the PM. You will see that your shadow is growing longer because the sun is moving from over you. E means that the sun is going to a great distance from you. You feel cooler, and your shadow is growing longer and turning in a circle. If you measure the sunbeams and your shadow before sunset, you will see that the sun is always high and in motion, passing in a circle above the earth from one country to another, and also you will see the moon and stars before sunset and after.
In the illustration of the sun rising and the sunbeams, you will see that the sun is round and smaller than the earth. Also that it is moving in a circle, above every place reached by its light. When the sun leaves a place it changes from day to night, and in the place where it was night it will be day. The illustration shows this. Pay attention to these proofs, the first shows that the sun is very high. The second shows that the sun is smaller than the earth, for if it is larger than the earth the people in Europe would see the sun above their heads, while the people in America would see it above their heads, and both at the same time. The third shows that the earth is flat and level. This is another proof to show you that the sun is going around in circles above the earth. When the sun is rising you will never see it coining straight to you. But going in a circle always to the right above your head. You will find that from the shadow of your house, or the sunlight when it shines into your room, etc. I know that the sun is smaller than the earth and in motion high in a circle above the earth. You will know that by looking at the sunbeams. Here is a good proof about the sun that everybody can try at home. Place your lamp on the table and place your hand at the side of the lamp, and you will see the shadow of your hand on the wall, and if you place your hand over the lamp you will see the shadow of your hand on the ceiling. And if you place your hand below the lamp you will see the shadow of your hand on the floor, if you watch the sun beams you will know that the sun is smaller than the earth and always in motion in a circle high above the earth. And after all, if you want to know which moves, the earth or the sun, you must take time to stop a while and watch them both. Here is another proof to show you that the earth is flat and stationary and the sun in motion. If you can see or feel the earth turning down on one side and up on the other then you are right. And the earth is in motion and the sun stationary, but if you cannot see or feel this, then the earth is stationary and the sun is in motion. And if the earth is always level on every side of you, it means that the earth is flat. If you will take time to think you will find out the truth for yourself, when I have shown you the way. I do not want you to believe it because I say so, but I want to show you how things are and if you will pay attention you will know what is right as well as I do. If the sun is stationary, we would feel the earth turning, from many different things. First the houses and posts would lean to one side with the land, and we would see one direction low and the other direction high. If you see the land low on one side and high on the other side, then the sun is stationary, but if it is not, then the sun is in motion. If you cannot see or feel the earth turning, then it is stationary, and the sun is turning. You will know from the water of the ocean that the sun is moving above it, for if the earth is turning upside down, there would be no water in the ocean. They say that the sun is bigger than the earth. But I found out from the sunbeams that the sun is smaller than the earth. If the sun was bigger than the earth, the people that live in Asia, the people that live in Europe, the people that live in Africa and in America would see the sun above their heads at the same time. There will be noontime all over, it will make no difference. If the earth were flat or round we would never see the sun over our heads when the people in other countries had noontime. Suppose there were ten people under one umbrella, the same size as one we use now, do you suppose they would all see the umbrella over their heads? No, they cannot see it above their heads because the umbrella is too small to cover them all. But if they have a big umbrella it will cover all ten people and all would see it above their heads. If there were an umbrella as big as a town it would cover all the people that live in a town, and all the people who live in the town would see it over their heads. And that is the way with the sun. If the sun were bigger than the earth it would shine on the whole earth, and all the people in the whole earth would see it over their heads at the same time. This is a good proof from the sunbeams and the umbrella, and you will find it a good proof that the sun is smaller than the earth and in motion, and the moon and stars are also smaller and in motion. The earth is flat and stationary, as I have proven it before. The sun we can compare with a parasol, if the parasol was large enough it could cover the whole world, just so the sun. It is not large enough to throw light over the whole world at one time. The Indian is looking at the proof of the parasol. He compares the sun with the parasol by saying that if the parasol were large enough, I could see it here above my head, too. Also the same with the sun, if it were large enough it could cover the earth. 
and the people, no matter where they were located, could see it at the same time above their heads. They used to say about 500 years ago that the earth was flat and stationary and the sun was in motion. But they had no proofs like those I have in my book. This is the reason they changed their minds. But now you must wake up and judge the truth for yourself. Read everything I say in this book and you will find it just right. There is no guesswork in my book as in the geographies. You do not have to believe what I say in this book, because you have eyes to see with, bodies to feel with and brains to think with. The geography says that the earth is turning, but no one has ever seen it turn, or felt it, but they can see the earth flat and stationary, the geography also says that the sun is stationary, but no one has ever seen it standing on anything at all. There is no use believing such foolish talk as we read in the geographies. The geography has no good proofs, but only guesswork, which amounts to nothing at all. There is no sense believing professors, because they made a big mistake by telling the people that the earth is round and in motion and the sun stationary. We do not blame them for this mistake, because everyone makes mistakes. This book is called, The Enlightenment of the World, because it will wake everyone up, and correct this mistake. The sun does not rise from a low place, as it appears to do. Examine your own shadow, or any shadow, in the morning, and again in the afternoon, and you will find the sun always is higher than you, just as the sky is above you. The earth and sky do not meet, as they seem to do. It is only the distance that makes it appear so. Anything at a distance from you seems low, anything near seems high. This is a proof that the earth and sky do not meet. If you stand in a field on a foggy day, you will see that near at hand the fog is higher than you are, but a little further off it looks low and touches the ground. No matter where you stand the fog appears in the same way, and the earth and sky do not seem to meet, and that is just like the fog around you. Examine it and you will find that what I say is correct. I started from Boston in a steamer going to New York City. As I neared the city, I happened to see two bridges ahead of me. Just as I was passing under the first bridge, I found that it was very high, then I looked at the other bridge and I found that it looked very low, almost touching the water. But when we reached the second bridge I found it as high as the other bridge, so I looked back at the first bridge we passed under and I found that it looked very low, almost touching the water. Then I knew that both of the bridges were high, but that it was the distance that made them seem low. It is the same if you go on land. For instance, suppose there is a long, clear road, with telegraph poles the same distance from each other. You look at the one nearest to you, and you will find it high, but the next one looks lower and next one still lower, and so they seem to be growing shorter and shorter until you cannot see them at all. But it is not true that the poles are lower, as they look, it is only the distance that makes them seem so just like masts of the ship on the water. This may also apply to the sky. The sun is the same way. When the sun is rising and setting it looks as though it were very low. It is not low, but high always, and it is the distance that makes it seem low. When the sun is over our heads it looks very high because it is near us. The sun, being of a limited capacity, can throw its rays only on a certain portion of the earth at one time. It is similar to an umbrella with a limited capacity to cover a certain number of persons. Of course, you can make an umbrella to cover hundreds of people, if needed, but the sun remains a certain size always, and can neither be made large or small, for it is the work of God, whereas the umbrella is the work of human beings. The earth has been, and will always be, flat, and there are several proofs and those proofs I claim. You will find in this chapter that I have given some proofs about the sun. Pay attention to every word you read in this book. You must not believe anyone who says the earth is round, for you are not crazy, nor a child. Do not believe without a correct proof. Children may believe stories, but now that you are old enough, wake up. You cannot make water nor anything else stay on a round ball. It is the same way with the earth. You cannot make the ocean stay on a round earth without falling off, no matter what people may tell you. There is more water than dry land on the earth, and the water being liquid, cannot be anything else, as I proved in chapter 1. 
Do not let anybody fool you by telling you that the earth is round. As long as there is no proof that the earth is round, you must believe that it is flat and stationary. If you have a good mind why don't you try to get the best knowledge and follow it? If you are smart, why don't you wake up and have the best for yourself? If I were you I would not allow anybody to fool me. Don't be afraid to change your mind when you find that you have been mistaken by following the wrong way. If you wish to know whether the earth is flat or round, read this work carefully, and you will find proofs that the earth is flat and nothing else. If you wish to buy books and maps of the flat earth, send me word and I can supply them. In this book we have given you facts that show that the water, the wind, the land, and the sun itself give you their own proofs. Use your own body to feel with, your own eyes and brains to see and understand these proofs. If anyone should wish to have a further explanation of my ideas, I will answer his questions, provided I am paid for my trouble. John G. Abazade. Boston, Massachusetts, U.S.A. The End Dear Friends Dear Friends I should like to say this to you. If you should like to read my book, kindly read it two or three times carefully, and think over every sentence and proofs, and you will find that I am right. Don't agree without your being positive. I don't want you to believe the earth is flat just because I am saying so in my book, but I want you to think over the proofs and try them and find out the truth for yourself. Now, I would like to ask for some testimony on the subject. I wish the names and addresses of those who agree with me so that I could help in stopping them teaching the small children that the earth is round, and such foolish things as the sun being stationary, and etc. I like the truth. I also wish the people to like the truth, and for that reason I wrote my book to explain the flat earth subject and so forth. I have proofs and I have some testimonials from educated people, and I desire some more testimonials or some good poetry on the subject from anyone who agrees with me. I should be glad to have their names to print in the third edition of my book. Also if anyone, having other good proofs on the flat earth subject, etc., will send same to me, I will print it and their name also. If I die my children will build upon the same foundation. That's the reason I am interested to get your opinion. Yours truly. John G. Abazade. Number 121 Tyler Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Testimonials. Cardinals Residence, 452, Madison Street, New York. April 8, 1912. Mr. John G. Abazade. Dear Sir. His Eminence, Cardinal Farley, desires me to acknowledge the receipt of your brochure, The Enlightenment of the World, 2D Edition, and to say in reply that he congratulates you on the evidence of thought. Painstaking and research shown in the work. Yours truly. James Lewis, Secretary. 64, Wavehe Road, Liverpool, England. January 26, 1911. Mr. John Abazade. 121, Tyler Street, Boston, Massachusetts, U.S.A. Dear Sir. I have received your wonderful book from a friend in Boston and I read it with great interest. You have excellent foundations. It is indeed the enlightenment of the world, and I hope you have every success in your excellent work. You may use this testimonial to the best of your advantage. I am, dear sir. Yours sincerely. Prof. H. B. Newton. Master of Science. American Press Writers Association. A. F. Hill, General Secretary and Treasurer. 13, Isabella Street. Boston, Massachusetts. June 24, 1910. John G. Abazade. Greeting. Your book, The Enlightenment of the World, is before me. Using the flag of the United States of America is a good plan. Proper words in proper places may lead us right. Water of the ocean is straight at its surface in long distances. Water flows from high to lower grades. May you go ahead and win great success in helping to overthrow one of the great delusions made by men of education. The sun is of less size than the earth, 
were it not so the rays of the sun would shine vertical upon all parts of the earth on the side of the earth toward the sun. During a number of years I have known of the globe earth delusion being a failure. Prove it over and over again to increase the great army in favor of the flat earth facts. Honest doubters need education in flat earthism until they are wise and know that they know. Prove it in the most easy ways, to reach as many as you can of the thinking and knowing wise people. Respectfully. Oren F. Hill. Architect. September 24, 1910. John G. Abazade. Dear Sir. Again I have read your important book, The Enlightenment of the World, by John G. Abazade. I am glad of your good work to remove the foolish globe earth delusion from minds of the people. Yours truly. Boston, Massachusetts. Oren F. Hill. 81, West Street, New York City, U.S., May 20, 1911. Dear Sir. I have received your wonderful letter and I thank you very much for your explanation. It interested me very much. You deserve to have more success for your useful book. Accept my love and best wishes. Respectfully yours. N. Mokrazel, Publisher Al Hoda, The Guidance. Mr. N. A. Mokarzel of 81, West Street, New York City, owns and issues Al Hoda, or The Guidance, the best Arabic newspaper in this country at this time. He is a man of good education. After he had read The Enlightenment of the World, he was so impressed with the truths it presented that he published a long article in his paper about it, stating many of its arguments. His article was published June 25, 1910. Salem, Oregon, March 23, 1911. Fear God. A. G. G. Y. To Him. Keep the Commandments of God and the Faith of Jesus Copyright June 1, 1909, by Lewis Hain Full of the Everlasting Gospel New Jerusalem, U. S. A. Mr. John G. Abazade. Dear Sir. I have read your book last night, The Enlightenment of the World. The proofs given in it are true and they are the very same as mine have been for years. If you please so you may forward one of your world's maps and one of the routine maps of the sun. If they will prove true too, then we will agree together to reform the world. Respectfully yours. Route 8, Box 115, Salem, Oregon. Lewis Hahn. Plymouth, September 13, 1910. My dear brother. I read your pamphlet with very great interest, and while I cannot accept its conclusions, yet I very much admire its independence of thought and its all-round general ability. Thanking you for sending it to me, I am. Very sincerely yours. Rev. John P. Bland, Cambridge, Massachusetts. J. P. Bland. My dear Mr. Abazade. We have been much interested in the writing and publication of your book and want to congratulate you on the interest it has aroused in the public. It presents a theory of the universe that receives little attention now. With good wishes. Yours truly. Helena S. Dudley. Academy for Science, New York, N.Y., March 21, 1911. Mr. John G. Abazade. 121. Tyler Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Dear Sir. Having heard so much about your book, I decided to procure a copy and found it full of interesting reading. The subject is a good one, and with the aid of your book, it makes it wonderfully plain. It is true that everything above the earth moves, the clouds, the sun, etc., and that the earth is motionless. I am distributing your copy among my friends, and am hoping for good results. Wishing you every success, I remain. Yours truly. William J. Hutchinson, M. S. A. F. C. New York City, N. Y. Daniel J. Fowler and Brothers, 63, Washington Street, New York, N. Y. June 16, 1910. John G. Abazade. 121, Tyler Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Dear Sir. We received your book, The Enlightenment of the World. 
We did not get a chance to read it, but from the title it indicates that it is a wonderful book. You ought to have thankfulness upon your application. Yours sincerely. Daniel J. F.A.U.R. and Bros. Second Letter. November 3, 1910. Dear Sir. The book of your autobiography we have read, and from our point we found it built on an excellent foundation. Yours sincerely. Daniel J. F.A.U.R. and Bros. Mr. John G. Abazade. Dear Sir. It gave me great pleasure to read your valuable book upon the enlightenment of the world. It is indeed very interesting. Hoping that you will meet a tremendous success, I remain. Yours truly. Philip K. Nuffel, Secretary. 60, Hudson Street. Secretary, Hudson Club of Boston. Louis Panini, Steamship Agent. Notary Public and Justice of the Peace. 27, Broadway Extension, Boston, Massachusetts, August 6, 1910. Mr. John G. Abazade. Boston, Massachusetts. Dear Sir. I have read with the utmost attention your Enlightenment of the World and find it is a book of great importance, and which deserves the most attention of the great men of scientific work. It shows plainly what you state and I firmly believe the whole of it to be true and interesting. I admire greatly your Enlightenment of the World, and I shall speak to all my friends to get a copy of the same. Respectfully yours. Louis Panini. July 29, 1911. Dear Sir. I think your efforts to prove that the earth is flat are commendable. W. W. Rich, Printer. 434, Main Street, Charlestown, Massachusetts. Dear Sir. That the earth is flat and stationary was believed for centuries and has not as yet been absolutely proved to be otherwise. I do not believe the earth is round and the fallacious theory should be exploited. Yours truly. Habib Kari Throbi. Tanyarain, M.T. Lebanon, Syria. Mr. John G. Abazade. Dear Sir. Have read your book on position of the earth and see nothing but simple facts. The Bible is the oldest and best book in the world. It is as explicit on the question of the world as on any other subject, Genesis 1 verse 9. God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Shall we want any other proof than that? Here it is, 14th verse. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, Genesis 1 verses 14 and 15. The 15th verse you will please read, for it is important. Read the 16th and 17th and 18th. Do you need any more proof? Here it is. When Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt 2,513 years from creation at Mount Sinai Jesus gave the Ten Commandments. The second commandment places it just where Genesis 1 verse 9 when he spake and it was done. You may go where you will on this broad earth and you will find it as the word says. We must not forget that it is a destroyed earth for it is not what God made in the first place. It was mostly land, now it, is two-thirds water to one-third land. I will refer you to the twenty-fourth psalm, first and two d verses, also Psalms 104 verses 1 to 22, p.s. 136, 6, Psalms 102 verses 25 and 26, Isaiah 42 verse 5. There are over a hundred passages that prove that this earth is not flying in the air. Let us believe in the old book and be governed by it. May God bless you in your work is my prayer. Yours very truly. J. B. Thompson. Dr. J. B. Thompson, Burroughs P.I., Boston. Boston, Massachusetts, U.S. May 29, 1911. John G. Abazade. Boston, Massachusetts. Dear Sir. I have heard about your book, The Enlightenment of the World. I know you have a good idea on the flat earth subject and good, correct proofs. I agree with you because I found out your work is right, 
and I wish the people to pay attention to your book and agree with you, too. Very truly yours. Sijian Joseph Gigia. 9, Hudson Street, Boston. Denison House, 93, Tyler Street. Boston, April 19, 1912. My dear Mr. Abazade. I wish to thank you for the copy of your book, The Enlightenment of the World. It is a very interesting statement of your theory. Please find enclosed payment for the same. I should like one more copy. Yours truly. Helena S. Dudley. I received a letter from Professor Davis of the Harvard University, Cambridge, Massachusetts, dated April 27, 1911, saying that to print my book would cost a considerable sum of money. Also that the earth turns round as some think or stands still, as you think, still it is the same hard-working place. I think Professor Davis wants me to stop printing my book, by saying it will cost me a sum of money. And he told what the other people think, but he did not say what he thinks. Also he says the earth is the same hard-working place. He did not say which way is right. I think he knows I am right on the flat earth subject, but he doesn't want to agree with me because it will be hard for him, he does not want to say anything on the subject for the reason that it would destroy his teaching. Harvard University Geological Museum, Cambridge, Massachusetts, U.S.A., Seismographic Station J.B. Woodworth, in charge February 23, 1911 John G. Abazade Dear Sir the press of many studies has prevented my acknowledging before now the receipt of your booklet and letter. I am afraid I am too old now to learn that the earth is not a sphere-like body. To be frank I do not see that you have proved that the world is not just as I regard it, and there we are, you don't see it as I see it. It does not matter much, does it? Whether it is round or flat since we see so little of it. I hope you prosper in your new place of business. Very truly yours. J. B. Woodworth. Boston, Massachusetts, April 3, 1911. Professor Woodworth. Harvard University, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Dear Sir. Answering yours of February 22, 1911, would like to say that at that time I was very busy so I could not answer you until the present time. As you stated in your letter that you are too old to learn, I am old and I learned how to read and write the English language. As a fact, the older a person gets the more he knows, and I think that you ought to know whether the earth is round or flat. You also said that I don't see the earth as you see it, but I am sure that I do, but I don't see or feel that this earth is round or in motion in going around the sun. You did not see or feel this earth of ours going around the sun. You also said that my booklet did not have any proofs in it. There are a great many proofs in it to make you change your mind, but you did not read it carefully. Now you want to read it carefully and pay attention to every proof that it contains and you will find that I am right. As to the difference it makes whether the earth is round or flat, why it makes a lot of difference between the true and the false. Take my advice and read my book carefully and you will find the truth and you will let other people know the truth also. Kindly don't forget and write me and let me know whether you have changed your mind or not, and oblige. Respectfully yours. John G. Abazade. 121, Tyler Street, Boston, Massachusetts. August 27, 1910. Mr. John G. Abazade. Boston, Massachusetts. Dear Sir. I am interested in your book and would like to get a copy of it. How may I do so? E. Scanlon. Care of Night Desk, Boston Globe. Boston, January 30, 1911. Mr. John G. Abazade. Dear Sir. I agree with you in every respect save one which is that there is a force of gravitation which you fail to explain, that there is such a force neither you nor I can doubt. This, I think, disproves your theory. The Boston Globe. E. A. Scanlon. Mr. E. A. Scanlon. The Boston Globe. Dear Sir. Answering your letter of January 30, 1911. You say you agree with me in every respect, 
save one which is that there is a force of gravitation. I am sure that there is no gravity on the earth as they believe, you ought to know that if you throw a dead body it will go the way you give it power. As much as you give it power it will go, and when the power goes out from it it will come down itself. But if you throw a live body like a bird or an airship, and so forth, it will go where it pleases any way it likes. This is a good proof to show you the earth is a dead body, it has no power and no gravitation at all. If no water comes out of the earth or from the sky nothing will grow on the earth. Yours truly. John G. Abizaid. Brookline, Massachusetts, May 7, 1910. John G. Abizaid. 121, Tyler Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Dear Sir. I have read your manuscript through, but I could not correct it, very well, for you being a foreigner and I an American, and the expressions used by us are so different that I would have to rewrite a lot of it. To meet with my hearty approval. However, you have some good ideas, but if you expect to sell your book to the people all over the earth, you will have to take out some, and add some to it. I would be glad to exchange with you when your book is ready for the market. Respectfully yours. Charles W. Morse. Charles W. Morse, author of, Is the Earth a Level Stationary Plane or a Whirling Globe? Is the Earth in Motion or at Rest? Salem, Oregon, April 18, 1912. Mr. John G. Abizaid. Dear Sir. I have received your book, 2D edition, and have mailed it to the governor of this state. All the proofs given in the same by you in regard to a flat and stationary earth and of rotating planets are correct and true, and I fully agree with you on the subject, because the earth never was formed in a rotating ball or globe whatever. I am yours truly. Louis Hahn. High Priest and President of the Divine Reformation. The Divine Embassy. The End.